and sun. There'll be peace when you are done. Lay your weary head to rest. Don't you cry no more. Hi folks, Dr. H here once again. I hope everyone is doing okay. I know it's been a while since my last uh, video for you. Um, and I do apologize. Uh, I've had some issues uh, both with connectivity and also uh, some other issues uh, regarding uh, some technical issues. So hopefully those are all ironed out now and um, we can push forward. We are almost to the end. So if you are struggling, please <clears throat> don't worry. You will get through it. We'll get through it together. I promise. Uh, this is, of course, uh, the intro, intro video to Section 4, and we are going to be learning about major scales, and we are going to be learning about key signatures. Now, if you find that you are struggling, especially with this, please don't get discouraged. Please don't worry. Key signatures and scales are something that are elusive to everyone in particular to those who are not musicians. If you don't play an instrument on a regular basis, or if you're not a singer, uh, or if you haven't had any experience with music at all, or little experience with music at all, you may find scales and key signatures very daunting. So uh, this video hopefully will help walk you through this section. Now, if you've already done it, and you've already achieved a, uh, a good grade, then by all means, don't worry. You don't need to even watch this. But if you need some clarification, this uh, introductory, introductory video may be of help to you. Uh, also, I want to point out, I've been very pleased with your responses to the class discussions. There will be two more discussions before the end, um, so please watch out for those. I do read your responses, even though it says that they are unread. Trust me, they are being read. That's one of the issues that I am working on right now with our, um, with our OIT. So uh, hopefully uh, those, that type of stuff is not uh, elusive to you and that you are able to participate in the discussions. I note that most of you are. Most of you are doing well. Um, if, again, you feel that you're not doing well enough, by all means, please get in touch with me. Uh, at the very uh, very least, we can do a face-to-face -face meeting, uh, but often some of these things can be cleared up with a simple email. I'm also open to Skyping if that is something that you can do. So we've got lots of options available to us. So please, don't, uh, don't not do anything. Do contact me so that we can work on these things together. Okay, so let's take a look then at Section 4, uh, Major Scales and Key Signatures. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, major scales and key signatures. I'm going to take just a quick look here at this uh, overview section. If you click on that, again, uh, these sections just sort of tell you what's going on, and we use this uh, little video to sort of use as an introduction. Now, some of this might be a bit superfluous, but let's go ahead and listen to it and watch it. Musicians use scales to organize the pitches in a piece of music. In this section of the course, the focus is on major scales. You will learn how to write and transpose major scales and learn about the different functions of each scale degree. You will also learn how to identify and write major key signatures and how to use the circle of fifths. Okay, so that was pretty short and sweet, uh, and uh, a little bit of, of an overview. Um, actually, there's a lot more to major scales and key signatures. Now, you might be puzzling a little bit over that word major. If you are a musician, that's probably something that you've heard many, many times before, but in music we have something called modes, major modes and minor modes. And uh, to, to be a little bit... Uh, simplistic about it. Uh, some people think about major or think of major modes as happy sounding and minor modes as sad sounding and you'll see what I mean as we go along. 
So we'll just uh, click on our little right arrow there and bring us to the next section, which is the uh, the chapter outline. And this is, of course, showing you uh, what is inside the chapter. So let's just go right to uh, the inside of the chapter. Um, we can already see here the definition of a scale. And Italian words are used throughout music. So don't let all of these Italian words uh, confuse you. Really, the word scale is just used universally, not just here in the United States, but even in Italy. Um, this is just showing you what a scale is. Essentially, a scale is simply eight tones. They start and end on the same letter name. And of course, these letters are all taken from the musical alphabet. So if we play this scale, and all scales have the same type of sound. Now I'm going to pull up the keyboard here. Hopefully it'll come up. There it is. And um, I'm going to play this scale. Let me see if I can move that keyboard over. I guess not. So I'm going to start on C. Actually, let's start on middle C, which is right here in the middle of the keyboard. And I'm going to play each of these tones. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now you might notice something in this scale, the way that I played it. I only played white keys. And we call this the C major scale because it begins on C and it ends on C. Now, something we haven't really talked about is the construction. Now, we're going to get into that, but I want you to bear in mind that melodies of songs are taken from major scales and from minor scales. So they give you an example here of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. This is taken from a major scale. Now, this particular major scale is the F major scale. Now you'll notice here it begins on F and it ends on F. Now let's pull that keyboard back up just a second. Now I'm going to play for you the F major scale. Now it'll look uh, very similar to the C major scale, but obviously instead of starting on C, it's going to begin on F. So just give a listen and watch what the notes that I play. Notice I played a black key. That's an F major scale. I start on F. I have to play a B flat. Oops. In order to make that work. Now listen to it if and, and listen to me play it without the B flat. Now that should have sounded a little strange to your ears. If it didn't, don't worry about it. Not everyone can hear the differences in pitches. Some people just simply cannot hear the different frequencies or the subtle changes. But I wanted you to be aware that all major scales have the same construction. They all have eight tones, and they all have a half step between the third and fourth degree and the seventh and eighth degree. The rest of the steps are all whole steps. So let's listen to this little melodic excerpt here. I guess we can't. I'm sorry, I can play the melodic excerpt, so here we go. So there you can hear all these tones. Isn't that a beautiful performance? So I'm not sure why it won't uh, doesn't offer to play that one for you, but nevertheless, there it is. Okay, so let's go ahead uh, and look at the next little little section here. The word diatonic and the word chromatic. These are two very fancy million-dollar words that. Um, you'll see what they mean, but essentially diatonic means two, dia meaning two. Chromatic has to do with something something else. Actually, it means 
means two colors. Isn't that something? And of course, we look at the piano keyboard, we can see that it is two colors, black and white. Here would be an example of a, uh, a diatonic scale. And the reason this is diatonic, and by the way, these are going to sound exactly the same. The reason this is called diatonic is because it uses two letter names. It's moving from A, let's pull that keyboard back up, from A natural to B flat. But the chromatic is using the same letter names, A to A sharp. And of course you've learned by now that A sharp is exactly the same thing as B flat. We call that and harmonics. So if we listen to the diatonic scale and we can watch it being played here A to B flat and the chromatic scale it's exactly the same sound that we get. So it's only called diatonic because it's using two letters, chromatic because it's using one letter and uh, an accidental. Okay so we learn about whole steps. <clears throat> The whole step is the equivalent of two half steps. For example, if we were to move up on the keyboard from A through A sharp to B, two half steps, so they're talking from this note to through this note to this note. Let's pull that keyboard back up so you can hear it. This is going to play it for you, but you can just see it from A. Uh, let's try this. There we go. From A, which is right here up through A sharp oops, to B. So from that distance, excuse me, from that key to that key is a whole step. Now something that might interest you from there to there is a half step, from there to there is a half step, so whole steps and half steps. Got it? Two halves make a whole. Now the piano keyboard is designed in such a way that if you were to play every single note from the bottom of the keyboard all the way up to the top, if you play all those notes, you're playing half steps, okay? If you, uh, if you look at the piano keyboard's design, you can see that when you play two adjacent white keys, as long as there is a black key in between, that's a whole step. If you play two adjacent black keys and there's a white key in between, that is a whole step. Uh, it's not done yet. If you play a black key and a white key and you skip a white key, guess what? That's a whole step. So as long as there's a key in between, there's a whole step. Now, uh, this changes a little bit if you go from a white key to a black key as long as there is a white key in between, that's a whole step. But these are dependent upon where you, uh, where you start on the piano keyboard. It's not consistent. In other words, you can't just play any white key up to a black key, right? There's got to be a key in between. And in this case, that would not be a whole step. That would be wider. Why? Well, look, you've got a black key and a white key in between these two. Okay, so what they're trying to get you to realize is the uh, difference between whole steps and half steps, both on the, uh, the music staff and on the keyboard. So if we click on the show me button, that's showing you a half step from A to A sharp and from A sharp to B. And from a to B, the two red notes, that would be a whole step. I'll let you read about the chromatic scale, but this is what it looks like, and here you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, so a chromatic scale does not have any particular type of order like a major scale has. A chromatic scale uses every single pitch on the piano keyboard from one to another. It still starts on C here and ends on C. This would be the chromatic C scale, if you would. But really, you could start on any note and play a chromatic scale. 
Chromatic semitones, you can read about these. Um, this is showing you what they are, E to E sharp, B to B sharp. Ladies and gentlemen, this is sort of also a discourse in something called enharmonics as well. Enharmonic simply means that the pitch has the propensity to be more than itself. For example, E natural is the same as F flat or F natural is the same as E sharp. Now if I ask it to play these for us, notice it sounded very much like a chromatic scale and it is in fact it's just going up from C to C sharp to D to, to D sharp and so forth. Now it's going to do a uh, a diatonic semitones. These were chromatic. Now we're going to do the diatonic. Notice that the letters change here, C to C. The letters did not change. D to D, the letters do not change. Here they do. C to D, although you could make an argument, well, hey, what about this? Well, yeah, I know. Music is like that. Music is full of stuff that contradicts itself, unfortunately. But let's listen to this. It's going to sound exactly the same. So essentially what we're saying is C sharp is going to sound exactly the same as D flat because they're one in the same pitch and harmonically and harmonically. Okay, so we talked about diatonic scales. It says by contrast, the diatonic scales do not contain any chromatic half steps. They are made up entirely of diatonic half steps and whole steps. The word diatonic derives from the Greek word diatonikos, meaning through the tones, well, yeah, okay. The word dia, or the syllable dia, is also uh, an important part of that word meaning too. But anyway, let's talk about this uh, from the standpoint of what we can hear. So the reason they're saying it only contains diatonic half steps is there is a half step between B and C. We pull up the piano keyboard, we can see that. Here is B, here is C. There is no black key in between, so that is a half step. It is a diatonic half step because we are changing the letters. If we had said B to B sharp, it would be chromatic. I hope that is a little clearer for you. Okay, um, this talking about diatonic scales using the church modes, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, you don't need to worry about those, so please don't stress about those fancy Greek words. They are really not important. I mean, unless you're going to study music at the four-year institution level, then you're going to have to know them frontwards, backwards, and every other words. Okay, so here we're talking about the major scale, and this is showing you that there are uh, pitches, eight of them, right? That one and eight are the same note, right? They're both tonic. And when I say the word tonic, I'm talking now about something called scale degrees. There are seven scale degrees, tonic, supertonic, mediant, subdominant, dominant, and submediant, and leading tone. And we'll find out what all of these are. But let's go right down to the meat and potatoes of this. That is this section right here where it says there are five whole steps and two half steps in a major scale. This arrangement, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, or you can see there, WWH, WWWH, it's always that way. No matter what note you start on, if you have that organization of whole steps and half steps, you've got a major scale. So I'm going to let you play with this and read through this, but that is essentially major scales in a nutshell. They are eight tones with a half step between the third and fourth degree and a half step between the seventh and eighth degree. Now, let me introduce you to something that you might not have used just yet. If at any time 
the the text, the online text, is a little confusing to you. You need further explanation. Go to this site, uh, and I have a link for us on our e-learning site, musictheory.net, and you've got lessons and exercises here as well as other tools that you can use and use and use. But let's go to these lessons, and uh, notice here it's got the staffs, the clefs, note durations, everything that we've been learning, rhythm and meter and so forth, but let's look at the major scale. Notice that this is just another way of explaining what a major scale is. And you can come down here and click on this little right arrow, and this is talking you through. Look at that. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, just like we discussed. It's asking us to build the C major scale. Look at that. We can also play these tones. It'll play it for you, I believe. Maybe not. I guess not. Well, that's all right. We can play it in the other software package. But, oh, wait, yes, we can. So it's just showing you. That's what the scale looks like. That's what it sounds like. It's showing you what it looks like on the piano keyboard. Now it's saying, let's build the E flat major scale. Now, in order to do that, we've got still got to have that same sequence of whole steps and half steps. We're going to have to use some accidentals. Notice how it's taking you through this scale. Now, let's listen to it. Showing you what the notes look like on the staff and on the piano. We can go back the C major scale and play it. Notice how major scales sound alike. And the reason for this is that organization of whole steps and half steps. It's always the same. So if you can remember that there's always going to be a half step between the third and fourth degree and between the seventh and eighth degree and the rest of them are all whole steps, You've got it. It's it's nothing more to it than that right there. Okay, so uh, going back to where we were, we're talking about major scales, and um, here is uh, something to listen to, Joy to the World. So that shows you that this is using a scale for its melody, okay? C, D, A, G, F, E, D, C, or if you say it backwards, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It's using the C major scale, this one right here. Okay, um, notice it's talking about patterns, tetrachords is another way to help you remember the major scale pattern. I'm not too concerned about it, but if it helps you, absolutely, by all means, you can learn that idea of tetrachord, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Uh, hopefully that will, will give you an idea. Take a look at it this way. There's a whole, whole, half, then there's a whole step, then another whole, whole, half, two tetrachords and a whole step, if that helps you. Talking about transposing the major scale, here we have the major scale transposed up. This one is just simply transposed it up a half step, making C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and so forth. Okay, that's what it would look like on the piano keyboard. And you can try playing it yourself. Here we go, the C major scale with flats. So this would be the C flat major scale. So it's just showing you that 
this organization of whole steps and half steps exists in every single major scale. There is no, uh, no major scale that does not have that organization. Okay, so building a major scale, well, we can talk about this. It's talking about using scales and using accidentals to create them. Now, if we were to play this as it's written, let's listen to it. Notice. We had to add this F sharp in order to make this uh, organization of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Now I'm going to reset this. Notice how that half step went away. That's because the distance between E and F is a half step in uh, on the piano keyboard. Now this is where your uh, yeah your text and I kind of have problems because it it until you click on it doesn't show you that. So just be careful. We do need to have that whole step between uh, E and F sharp, which creates a half step between the seventh and the eighth degrees. Now, if you come down further on the page, this is going to show you the G major scale with both the F sharp and one with the F natural. Let's listen to the one with the F natural. So you can tell it sounds a little different. That's because when we don't have that half step from the seventh degree to the eighth degree, we don't have the leading tone like we should. So uh, it's important to put that accidental in. Okay, so I'm gonna let you play with these and you can play with the next ones, building a major scale on D and so forth, learning how to put these accidentals in their places and don't forget you have that other resource, the musictheory.net, that can help you immensely with construction of major scales. Now, getting to the major scale degree names, something that you're going to want to know. Again, this is just the names, and they are the same regardless of what scale you happen to be playing. They don't change at all. This is talking a little bit about something called self solfege. This do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Well, you might notice that um, they use this in the movie Sound of Music with Julie Andrews. So that's uh, something that is European in origin. Actually started by uh, the use of it uh, from, from a man uh, by the name of Zoltan Kodai who sort of developed this into an educational system. And actually, he developed it in order to teach deaf children how to recognize pitches. So they were hand symbols. Maybe you learned these in school. Um, the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Maybe you learned those in school. Um, and uh, many children are taught them today. We have a, a large uh, solfege movement here in the United States and in, in our music education. So um, just to see where the scale degrees are, how they function, go ahead and play through all of these. And this is going to take us through both the treble and the bass clef. And here it's talking about scale degree functions. I encourage you to read all of this. And look, there's our sound of music, uh, which uses the phrase uh, do a deer, a female deer, and so forth. Okay, so hopefully this has helped you uh, get a little more clear uh, picture of what major scales are. The next thing we're going to do is learn about the construction of key signatures. Now I'm going to let you do these worksheets together uh, uh, with the uh, 
scale degrees and on half steps and whole steps. Um, and then once you get through of these, you can take the quizzes. Uh, and then you'll be ready to do uh, major scale patterns. And we will move right along into some other aspects of the uh, construction of major scales and major key signatures, okay? So we'll have another video for that. We'll call that part two. So uh, again, if you have questions about this, please don't hesitate to email me and I will help you all I can. Thanks very much, folks.